Well, thank you, Holly and Tamara and all of our music folks for making worship possible this morning. And welcome again. It's great to have you in God's house. And we continue our series in James entitled Faith in Action. James is a very action-oriented book and also very practical. This morning, we're looking at the strength of humility. The strength of humility. We are in James chapter 4, verses 1 through 17. And James gets very real with some of the struggles that we have, but also gives us the key to overcoming them. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and you do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask, and you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Adulterers, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that it is for nothing that the scripture says, God yearns jealousy for the spirit that he has made to dwell in us, but he gives all the more grace, and therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into dejection. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers and sisters. Whoever speaks evil against another or judges another speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy. So who then are you to judge your neighbor? Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a town and spend a year there doing business and making money. Yet you do not even know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wishes, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance, all such boasting is evil. Anyone who knows the right thing to do and fails to do it commits sin. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts and minds this morning. Well, as I said, we're looking at the strength of humility this morning. Oh, I heard about this man who was praying and he prayed, uh, Dear Lord, I haven't been greedy or grumpy today. I haven't been angry or nasty or mean or selfish. And I feel pretty good and thankful about that. But Lord, in a few minutes, I'm going to get out of bed and I'm going to need a lot of help after that. <laughs> Well, that's honesty, isn't it? And this morning, James is very real about the struggles that we have. And I know as you look at this passage and read this passage, you think, well, this is not exactly something to jump for joy about. But sometimes you need a coach in life that's going to tell you the real truth in life, the real struggles in your life, and the key to overcoming it. And so that's exactly what I think James does here this morning. Of course, he echoes some of this of what Jesus said in Luke the four. 14 chapter. And so I invite you to think about the struggles that we have. And I think James is getting real and saying, you know, for all of us, and we do strive to live the best life that we can, but our behavior needs to match our beliefs. Our work needs to match our words, and our walk needs to match our talk. And it's easy to say that, and it's not as easy to do that. And so how do we do it? And of course, he names a number of the struggles that we have. We don't need to go through the whole litany of the struggles, but we all have struggles if we're honest with ourselves. And each of us sort of have different struggles, different weaknesses. Uh, and then James gives us here uh, something that's, uh, I think, very, very helpful. And, and prior to that, I would just say that Jesus, when he was talking to the Pharisees, which is really the religious leaders, the people who intended to do good, uh, said sometimes that we are hypocrites. Now, we don't realize the imagery that's behind that, but the word hypocrite really meant an actor, and these actors would wear a, a, f a mask over their face, and it would have a megaphone inside it that, to their mouth. And so uh, when he's saying hypocrites, he's mean sort of people that are posing to be something then they, that they aren't. But the truth is, for a lot of us, 
I mean, we are trying to do the right thing, but we struggle and sometimes we fall short. And so James is putting out some things that we can do. And I want you to notice the action words that are in this sort of centerpiece, which is verses 6 through 10. And so the key is, I think, that the beginning and the end of this passage begin with the word humility and the strength of humility. He said, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. And here's the verbs. He says, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil or temptation, and it will flee from you. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. So take one step towards God, and God will take two steps towards you. I've always heard that, and I believe that. Cleanse your minds. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Oh, but you can't really get excited about that, can you? No. <laughs> I know, it's like, it's not a cheer exactly, but you know, there's something about that. And again, the key, I think, is humility, because he says, humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. And that's exactly what Jesus said in Luke, the 14th chapter. And for all of us, sometimes we wonder, you know, what what can we do as we face these struggles? And I think the whole idea is to live in humility, to have a sense of, ourselves, our weaknesses, but also have a sense of who God is and that God could come around us and strengthen us as we go day to day in life. And I heard this story that I love from uh, a Native American, and this young Native American was talking to his grandfather, and he said, grandfather, he was in his early teens, he said, sometimes I feel like there's a real struggle within me, and, uh, and I don't know what to do. And the grandfather said, well, tell me more about that. And the young Native American said, well, I feel like there's a good wolf and a bad wolf inside me and the, the bad wolf was telling me negative things to do and the good wolf was telling me good things to do and I feel like there's pull back and forth and grandpa who will win the good wolf or the bad wolf and the grandfather wisely said whichever wolf you feed whichever one you feed and I think in our own lives it's easy sometimes when we look at temptation the things that pull us one way to dwell on those things. It's hard to not have those things come into our mind, but if we dwell on those things and sort of feed that side of it, then then we're going to be pulled in that direction. On the other hand, we can feed the good side, right? The Holy Spirit side, and we can do the things like pray and to worship and to read God's word, and when we do that, we strengthen that so we are pulled in that direction. We open ourselves to the grace and love and power of Almighty God. I don't know where you are on humility, so, <laughs> but I do think, you know, it's like sometimes you hear, even in sports, be humble, you know, do your best and be humble. And I think what that does is if you get to thinking too much of yourself, I don't care whether it's sports or whatever it is in life, you open yourself to to failure, to not doing your best, right? To thinking more of yourself. And so be humble in victory and gracious in uh, losing. But humility is so important, and humility allows us to be strengthened by God. For me, a lot of times when I think of humility, I think about Lent and Ash Wednesday. Now, I know we're a long ways from Lent and Ash Wednesday. We're heading towards Thanksgiving, right? But for me, Lent has always been a, a time that I discovered that it's a time to really strengthen myself. And how do you do that? I didn't grow up in a, in a church where we really emphasized Lent. We emphasized Easter, Christmas. We emphasized Advent, but not Lent. But I discovered something that in that Ash Wednesday service, you know, we take the, the dust, right, that's ground from the palm branches and put it on our forehead. Uh, the imagery is of a symbol of repentance where uh, many times when the city would be devastated and be burned to the ground or a forest would be burned, that the trees become powder, become uh, just blackened, right? And you look out at the devastation, you think, oh my gosh, life will never come from this. And if you go back, let's say two or three years later, and you see the forest that had been burned down, it's just springing with life. And the reason for that is that burned ash becomes great fertile soil. And so it is in our lives, I think, as well. Sometimes when we're humble and we allow the, the tough things that come our way to make us into a kind of a ash that we discover a soil that great things can grow out of. And so that's the kind of the idea, I think, that James has this humility that it grows forth. And 
again, he says, humble yourself before the Lord, and God will exalt you. And I love what D.L. Moody used to say. He said, be humble or you'll stumble. Be humble or you'll stumble. And uh, John Wooden said this. He said, talent is God-given. Be humble. Fame is man-given. Be thankful. Conceit is self-given. Be careful. And I think that's, uh, that's really good. So in your life, where are you in your journey with humility and your struggles? I think for all of us, as we think about the struggles that we have and the weaknesses that we have, or just looking around at ourselves and kind of thinking, you know, how are others doing in the struggles? All of us are struggling at something, you know? But there are things that we can do by tuning in to the frequency where God is working to purify our hearts, to think about the one thing that's going to strengthen us, which is the Spirit of God, to redouble the things that help us in the struggles, prayer, worship, reading God's Word, and when we do that, powerful things can happen. Paul, in writing to the Philippians, in Philippians chapter 3, says this, he said, have the same mind as was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was equal with God, emptied himself, the word is literally emptied himself or humbled himself, and took on our likeness, took all of our struggles onto himself, and to follow him in the spirit of humility and gentleness. And I think that's so powerful as we look at Christ. Many times we can't think of an image, maybe, of someone who is strong and victorious and humble. Jesus is that one, isn't he? And we think about the image of Jesus and always there with people, always present, always able to listen, always humble before God and God's will. And so we can have that strength too. I love the story of uh, Booker T. Washington, and as you may know, Booker T. Washington was a very famous African-American uh, back in a chapter of the country's history where there's just even more prejudice than today, racism, and he was the president of Tuskegee University, and he was a famous inventor, of course, famous educator, and he was walking down an a affluent uh, a street in an affluent neighborhood, and this wealthy woman, not knowing who he was, came up to him and said, well, listen, uh, would you like to chop wood for me for some money? <laughs> and Booker T. Washington didn't say anything. He said, well, you know, I'd be happy to do that for you, ma'am. So he, he took off his shirt. He wasn't dressed up, but he chopped this woman's wood for about, you know, half a day, and he neatly stacked it up. And uh, when he was done, there was a, a little girl in the neighborhood who recognized him. And she went to this woman and said, you know who that is? And she said, well, no. She said, that's Booker T. Washington, the president of Tuskegee University. And she said, oh, my gosh. So she called in Booker T. Washington and said, I am so sorry, sir. I had no idea who you were. And he just very calmly said, you know what? I'm always happy to get a little exercise and do something nice for a friend. And I consider you a friend now. And there began a great friendship. And that affluent woman went and gathered a number of her friends, other women, and they put on a big fundraising campaign for Tuskegee University. Well, the point of that isn't really that, you know, the fundraising campaign, so much of it is Booker T. Washington's attitude of humility, right? To just say, you know what, I'll chop wood for you, and we will become friends, right? Because he was humble, and I've always admired so many people that have that kind of humility that is so beautiful. Uh, I know a lot of you watched the Olympics like I did, and I was so moved by so many athletes of a great story of faith, but one of them that I really admired was Noah Lyles. And, of course, he was favored in the 200-meter, also ran in the 100-meter, and he won the 100-meter race uh, just by, he came from behind, and so just won it by a matter of inches, right? And people celebrated that, and then the next day he was supposed to run the 200-meter. He did run the 200-meter, and he was favored to win the 200-meter and he ran a good race, but at the last uh, second or two was uh, defeated by a man by the name of Tobago, who was from the uh, continent of Africa, one of the first people to win that uh, race from Africa. And the first thing that Noah Lyles did was to go and to congratulate. He was the first one to congratulate Tobago. He did, um, uh, Noah Lyles did get a medal, but not a gold medal. And then after that, he collapsed, and they brought oxygen out, and we came to find out that he had, he had COVID and still ran the 100 meter and the 200 meter. I just can't even imagine that. 
But he didn't make any excuses. And the first thing he did was he posted on social media. He said, I just want to give glory to God for the ability to race and uh, for uh, winning the 100 meter and being able to compete in the 200 meter. Never said anything really about COVID until later. And his spirit of humility was so beautiful. And, you know, I admired him prior to that moment, but I admired him all the more afterwards. And you know why? Because he had such a sense of humility that I admired his character all the more. And there's lots of things to admire about character, but when you have enough humility to congratulate someone who has defeated you, to not make excuses, even when you got a great one like COVID, right, <laughs> and you're running, I think that's beautiful. And I think it shows the grace and humility that, uh, that Christ would have us share. All of us every day are facing a lot of struggles. Struggles are part of life. Struggles that we have, financial and all kinds of other things, but also the struggle just to live a faithful life as a servant. And you and I are called not to just believe, but also to grow as disciples of Christ, even as Jesus called the disciples and also invited them to grow as disciples. And as we grow, we're going to take part in struggles that are often very, very difficult. But through the struggles, through the challenges that we face, we'll grow stronger if we lean into grace. And part of the process of leaning into grace is to have a sense of humility. I invite us all to listen to Jesus this morning. He said, those who are humble will be exalted. And James, echoing those same words, he just says the key to life and struggles is to be humble in that. And when we're humble, we lean into God's grace, and God's grace will enfold us, will lift us, and help us to be victorious. Amen? Amen. We join me in prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for your word. It is a lamp for our feet and a light for our pathway. We thank you for James' words of wisdom and, of course, Jesus' great insight from the Holy Spirit. Lord, it's so easy to talk about humility, but, Lord, we do face struggles each and every day. And if we just learn to be humble, as you encourage us to do, then we can learn the secret of leaning into your grace. For we know that you are strong in us through all of us, through your Holy Spirit, to help us be victorious in all of life and to show your love and grace to others. We pray this in Christ's name and all God's people said, Amen.